I mean, I, it's like you, you're now telling me that you have to know where you are, yes? But in one way, to don't know is a blessing. <laughs> so, yeah, so I want to know this contradiction because also Rumi and the Sufis write about the unknowing, yes? And the, the not existence is close to God and the not existence beings are like the most, like, beautiful as certain hearts that can open, yes? So then how the not existence and the not <coughs> not knowing can ground and yeah, yeah. those things. Yeah, I know, yes. And that's when uh, we start exploring in a way the limitations of the language that we have, that we have to um, uh, explain and guide us through, um, I would say, our awakening, our remembering or understanding. So, because we, we have the word knowing. <laughs> so, and, you, and so then it, we, you know, we could start getting into a philo philosophical uh, discussion on it in a way we are already. I will say this in my, I can only go by my own experience. Um, it is, I feel about moving from uh, a headspace, being in the head, to wanting to know from the head. From the head, knowledge is accumulation of information. If I accumulate more and more and more information, I will be knowledgeable. Therefore, I will know. Therefore, I will um, gain access to wisdom and I'll be really intelligent okay. uh, but the but the knowing from the heart is not facts and figures and logic and accumulation of information okay. it's not lists it's not logic it's not rational it's love but basically <laughs> and uh, uh, love um which you can say is wisdom there is a knowing when we feel love we feel really alive and we feel at home we feel safe there's a coming home that knowing i i feel alive i know i i, I feel um there's a knowingness to that that knowing is a different to a mind that says, oh, I know what that means. I know what that is. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. But then the heart speaks and says, yeah, you, you can't say, you can't describe experience. You can to a point. You can say, what does it, what you can, you, you can describe what an orange is, <laughs> how to eat it. But you, you, it's nothing like actually experiencing it. Um, and so the heart, being that it's not about the rational, and I would say the linear, um, it is so expansive. It is beyond our mind to quantify. It, in that way, there is an unknowing. There's an, uh, there's an unraveling of the mind. It's more about the mind letting go of the mind having to label and describe and um, uh, fix things in logic. So when you start moving outside of those confines, those boxes, you start, then things start being a bit more fluid. 
and the mind can go oh, i don't know where i am i don't know who i am what's going on um and there is i feel a phase in the um awakening and we probably in my experience revisit this there's layers to it before one comes to because i'm not buddha i'm certainly not saying i'm buddha <laughs> but i think you kind of touch on it i you know have moments of whoa where you dissolve mm -hmm. the the the, the boxes metaphorically and literally energetically dissolve you you move out of the confines of the mind and you feel how everything is connected and you dissolve so therefore you become nothing but everything okay so in order to be in that place you need to be embodied people can feel it similar and it's interesting because there's a sacred use of plant medicine which will enable you to get out of your head <laughs> get out of the logic Mm -hmm. yeah you know you know, you know where i'm going mm -hmm. and in the west people take drugs to get out of their heads okay so there's a distortion of that sacredness mm -hmm. and it's really clear in that phrase i want to get out of my head yes people do want to get out of their heads they're fed up with being stuck in the mind tra trap the monkey mind okay so yes <laughs> Yes, it's a beautiful topic and thank you.